showered, I've eaten, I'm gonna rest hoots, and finally, and I mean finally, I can finish off season six and hopefully I'll move on to the remaining three seasons of the show. Anyway, the second part to wearing back again. Let's go! So, pretty much like every other season finale, we pretty much get our obligatory or a flashback previously message. So essentially we, we picked up where the last part ended as basically we try to figure out why exactly our MLP version of Suicide Squad get, can't get closer closer to the Changeling's hideout even though they, they have Discord on their side. We're here, and that's there, and I clearly meant for us to be there and not here. Oh, I can probably explain. Oh, well, you know, the Guys, by the way, I really love the beginning of this two-parter because we get to see the villains, well, rather, reformed villains interacting off each other. The thing about magic here is... <laughs> Discord basically discovers why exactly his magic can only go so far, as Florak explains. No you. Nothing other than changeling magic works here. Chrysalis' throne is carved from an ancient dark stone that soaked up outside magic the same way changeling soaked up love. It's how she keeps the high stake. So, yeah. So, basically, Chrysalis did think this out for her kingdom in that, essentially, she carved, carved her own throne out of a dark stone to basically absorb any outside magic and only changeling magic is effective. So that pretty much answers the question of why the changelings were hidden and why they've been hiding for so long and how they weren't detectable. Like I said... The changelings, I gotta give a lot of props to them. Um, um, for this plan. As Starlight basically tests it, and what Thorax says is true, so the only way for them to get closer is that they essentially have to walk there. Since that's really their only option. Also, Discord basically annoys them on the entire trip. But also at the same time, you want to say just just want to say shut up, Discord. Or you say rescue. But essentially, they basically go basically come up with a word of Discord tripping over himself. Also, I got to admit, Changeling armor looks pretty badass. So because Thorax is the only one who knows about this place, he basically is the one who leads our our again, Suicide Squad, inside the cave that is constantly shifting like we're in a Metroid game. I don't think we'd be able to find our way without you. You definitely wouldn't. Um, where's the way out? It's a changeling vibe. It shifts and changes like we do. And we're the only ones who can navigate it. It's totally 
The lore of this is amazing and I love it. So they continue going through the Atlas Cave as Discord continues to, well, complain. If is right, then yes. Well, that's reassuring. And how are we supposed to destroy the throne when we find it? I'm not sure I don't know. That's reassuring. I don't suppose you brought any throne destroying tools along with these useless hydro props. Ask the Lord of Chaos, who can't go for a walk without whining non stop. Yes, but when the throne is destroyed, I'll be able to rip the very fabric of reality to save our friends, while you'll still be a self-absorbed, below-average illusionist. Self-absorbed? Why? Can this marriage be saved? Trolling the changelings as, as their leader. So that's pretty impressive and funny at the same time. Not exactly great and powerful, but effective. I'll take it. Klutzy Draconiquist. Yeah, that's the name. Klutzy Draconiquist. And of course, you can see Discord's reaction to that since it, it was based off of him. Yeah, but it turns out that basically that part of the plan was essentially Trixie giving some of her smoke bombs to Thorax uh, and basically distract him while the real Trixie goes with Discord and Starlight behind the scenes. Oh, I really think we need a new code word. That was a pretty good plan. But we still don't know where we're going. Actually, we might. Two of the changelings didn't go with the rest. With an intruder in the hive, they tend to protect the queen. <laughs> Good thinking, Starlight. <laughs> yeah. But essentially, it turns out that there's a whole load of guards there. We'll be spotted for sure. We need some kind of distraction. I mean, fresh out of smoke bombs. Normally, I'm the most distracting thing I can think of. Without magic. You shouldn't underestimate yourself. So then, we get Discord basically distracting, acting the changelings, and... Hello, changelings and changelings. Believe me, I was just as surprised as you are that I'm here. When I heard that I'd be playing for a bunch of changelings, I was beside myself. Then I realized it was just one of you. <laughs> oh. Oh. You probably are too distracted by this joke, but then again... You guys are morons! <laughs> but seriously, this isn't the toughest crowd I've ever been in front of, but it's definitely the easiest to bug. Bug? <laughs> is this thing on? 
So essentially, Discord distracts the changelings and ends up getting separated from the rest of them and comes across, well, I, at first he's joyous by this, but And despite this, through some rather funny bit of humor, Discord ends up getting captured. Yeah, spoiler alert, it's just basically a changeling, and basically leading them into a trap, as essentially Trixie decides to sacrifice herself. So, yeah, this is actually kind of a heartwarming moment between Starlight and Trixie. Kind of wondering why a lot of brony analysts tend to believe that this friendship is toxic. Which, I really don't see that being the case, like, at all, from what I've seen. Yes, you can make the argument in No Second Prances, but that episode is not as bad as everyone's making it out to be. And I really love this heartwarming moment. So, long story short, Trixie sacrifices herself and uses her magic and gets captured while Thorax and Starlight get closer closer to the high. Thorax splits up up while Starlight basically goes and ends up finding the throne. And also finds this. Nightmare fuel is over. One little pony all by herself. Oh, how will I ever prevent this daring rescue? So yeah, that's definitely terrifying. Was that because you forgot about her, or did you really just not think these contingency plans through? You won't get away with this! I already have. No pony is coming to save you. Your little squad was it, and now it's just you. Thorax is still out there. Don't mention that traitor's name in my kingdom. He was a fool to me, and even more a fool to return. So, if you knew that he left, then why exactly did you not chase him down? Did you think he was not worth it? If that's the case, then that really is a stupid move on your part. Alright. When I find him, he'll learn just what happens to those who betray the eyes. So, then why did you, again, then why did you let him go in the first place? And it seems I don't have far to look, do I? Huh? Wow! Guy gives Star like this, she is really good on the contingency plans. And so yeah, it turns out the Starlight that was captured was actually Thorax the whole time. Everything has gone according to my plan. What plan? Why did you do all this? So I could see you, of course. 
By replacing the most beloved figures in Equestria, my drones will be able to store all the love meant for them and return it here to me. Every pony will do as I command, and my subjects and I will feed on their love for generations. That's a really interesting plan, but uh, can you fix a little bit of the side of your hair? It's kind of distracting. <laughs> but, yeah. But, honestly, all jokes aside, I gotta give Chrysalis this. The second time in a row that the Changelings have appeared, they've actually managed to do what seemed impossible. Think about it. In Canterlot Wedding, she successfully impersonated Cadence and almost took over all of Canterlot all the way back in Season 2, and in Season 6, she managed to kidnap every single pony with a powerful amount of magic, kidnap the main six, everyone in the Crystal Empire and Canterlot. I really got to give Chrysalis and the Changeling this. For the second time in a row, they're pretty much the villains that have come the closest to succeeding. In terms of pure power, t is still the best, but when it comes to actual success and planning, Chrysalis is the best, without a doubt. But then Starlight notices the new wings were formed on new the new wings on Thorax, and essentially, essentially he does the impossible. Well, as she tries to steal the love from from Thorax, as Starlight basically explains why. And Chris and Thorax does just that. And it turns out, nope. I played that a little bit too early, but yeah, that's pretty much going to show where this is going to go at this point. But yeah. But apparently, by giving all Chrysalis his love, Thorax gets a n new changeling form. And I gotta admit, it's very rather creative. The changeling designs that we've known have taken a lot more of an insect design of a lot of black with light blue eyes. But in Thorax's redesign, we see colorful purple wings. Pretty much his skin is green, his eyes are purple, and has huge orange Orange horns. This is what happens when you give love freely instead of taking it. And because of that, the rest of the changelings basically give in to Thorax and give all their love. So like the earlier clip before. <laughs> and of course everybody is free. And we see the Changeling's rather innocent and, and more heartwarming designs. Mother Shy? <laughs> it's Earth. Good to see you, too. Starlight? What happened? We defeated the Changelings with no magic at all. They found a new leader. Okay, so we know where this is gonna go. They're gonna go. She's gonna talk to Chrysalis, give her the opportunity to try to change her ways, and Chrysalis is just going to accept the opportunity, just like everybody else. And there is no revenge you can ever conceive of that will come close to what I will exact upon you one day, Starlight Glimmer. So, Season 6 basically essentially broke the formula, where you would think a reformed villain would take that opportunity, but no. Chrysalis actually is sticking with her revenge and wants to get her revenge on Starlight, and she gets away. And you would think this would be right at the moment where the heroes would finally decide to shoot her down. Since at this point, she has no subjects, 
She has no kingdom. She has no magic. She's lost all authority over her kingdom. You would think now might be the best time to finish her off. But no, they just let her go for no reason whatsoever. I look forward to discussing how we can improve our relationship in the future. However, for the moment, perhaps it is best that we leave the Changeling Kingdom to the Changeling Land. Splendid idea! Now who's ready for some celebratory tea at Flemishtime? I would be interested if I can't get over the fact that you let the big bad, who obviously is back for revenge, going to come back, just let her go when she has no power whatsoever. Alright, so because of this existential journey, Starlight basically owns up to Queen and returns to her old village to basically be a part of, well, her celebration. Are you kidding? Of course! Great. Now, where's that baking contest? This pony needs a cupcake. So, I'm able to rip the very fabric of reality again. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still a self-absorbed, below-average illusionist, right? Actually, I was going to say a couple of those illusions were slightly above average. If you ever need a little chaos in your act, let me know. Ha! When pigs fly! Your wish! Fly. Oh, it's going to be a lot to digest, Rainbow. And thus, that was the second part of, of To Wear and Back Again Part 2. Even despite my ranting of letting Chrysalis go, this was a kick-ass finale. I gotta admit, the second part definitely does bring a lot of intrigue. I love the lore that they give on the Changeling Hive, and how the Changelings work, and how the Changelings were able to hide all this time. All the reformed villains interacting all off each other does give a lot of lighthearted comedy, and of course the episode gives us some fresh induced nightmare moments for the kids to enjoy. Play. And I really do like the fact that they actually decided not to reform Chrysalis, make her actually stay in her evil ways, and essentially basically be like, I hate you for taking away my entire village, and I will get my revenge on you. And once again, for the second season finale that we've seen them, the Changelings have come the closest to succeeding. Even though, like I said, Tyrek was also around that tier and was more powerful in terms of magic, in terms of planning and strategy and being able to pull it off, the Changelings were actually the closest to succeeding. Now, like I said, the fact that the, the, fact that the heroes just decided to let the, let the big bad, who by this point had no power go, does definitely knock the points down, but... Honestly, I don't see why there are people who have a problem with this finale. I honestly thought it was pretty good. Well, again, other than my half-winded ranting of letting the main villain go, but that's just me. So, I think as a whole, I would say to wear him back again, part two, I think, honestly, part one was an A-, minus, so I would have to say that part two would be a B. So, as a whole, I would probably say... So yeah, so part one to wear him back again is an A minus, part two is a B, and if you put them together, the whole finale of to wear him back again gets a B plus. And with that, finally, and I mean finally, after holding it up for two years, I finally finished season six. Hopefully now, I will hopefully see you on the next Let's Play, and hopefully if I have a better scheduling and remember to do these reviews more often like I have, like I have been doing for, for this summer, hopefully I can be able to catch up with the rest of the show and finish it off on good terms. And if I see you in the next review, next time we will finally begin Season 7. I'll see you guys then for the next Let's Play. I'm Flick Can Gamer, and I'll see you next time. Bye.